you haven't been here before, like, comment, subscribe. That's the drill. If you don't, there's a good chance that I'm going to use the noose that's been hanging in my closet for the past six days uh, to off myself tonight. And I'll know if you didn't do that. Now, the reason why there's been a noose hanging in my closet for the past week is because I did quit smoking cigarettes. Now, we're not there yet. It's only been six days. Uh, and I appreciate you, before I forget, I appreciate everybody that left a comment. Uh, I love how this page isn't just random call outs. It's not a pump page. It's not a bash page. There's no real bad vibes in that comment section. It's a lot of positive feedback and I can't tell you how much that's helped me get through the past six days. It's unbelievable. Everything that you guys wrote was received uh, with joy. So, and it's really, really helped me. By the way, another thing, not to get off on tangents here, but I, I want to apologize for any woman that I ever said to never cut their hair. Uh, I, every girlfriend that said they wanted to take a few inches off. And I said, never that, um, because I've had it on for three seconds and I, I want to burn it, scorch it and send it back to the horse from which it came. Um, but let's get off uh, of the bull crap. We've been through that. Now let's jump into the fact that I have a, I'm not even going to mention it. Hopefully that the AI, the AI isn't good enough to see what's behind me. If I mention it, then I might get kicked off YouTube, but really it's just a symbol, a metaphor for not having pride in your trades. And what do I mean by that? I've been over this in previous videos. So if you've been here for a while, you already know fear, pride, greed, hope, four emotions to avoid at all costs. And I beat it into your brain every day because there's not much else I can teach you. Everything else you're going to have to learn on your own, how to read it. You can look through the charts and everything and get some ideas, but you're not going to win by taking tips. So, you know, I can only go so far on this page. I can only say so much. So there's certain things that I really want to beat home. Okay. And one of those things is not having pride in your trades. For example, it can be on the way down. Let's say you, uh, you're you up in a stock or maybe you bought at the wrong time and the stock is dropping. You have to swallow your pride and not say, oh, well, I made the right decision. So I got to hang in here for at least break even. Well, let me average down. All of a sudden, if you don't take that uh, a disciplined 10% haircut, then you're going to be in a bag with multiple weeks sitting there. You do not want to be sitting on dead money. So if you swallow your pride and you say, ah, you know what? I grabbed Moan at 92. Dang, I'm lucky to get out at 92 and 88. Uh, let's swallow my pride. Maybe it's not going to go to four bucks like everybody says it's going to do. Maybe it's not going to go to 135, which in my head I thought it was going to do. So I said, screw it. Uh, you know, I missed the, I missed it. I'll take my $400 loss. I'll take my 3% loss. I'll get out and I'll live to fight another day. And where did it go? It went to 68 cents. So I could have easily held on to it. Maybe I would have got real frustrated, sold at 68 cents. It causes emotions. It causes issues. That's why you have discipline because if you do it time and time again, sometimes it's going to bite you in the ass. Sometimes you're going to sell and you're going to swallow your pride and say, ah, I am going to sell Moan at 88. And then it runs to $6. Guess what? nine times out of 10, it's the right decision. So what you can't, you understand what I'm saying? So you make that decision every time. The one that's going to be nine times out of 10. Every stock that I've done this with in the past two, three weeks has, if I wouldn't have sold, I'd be down more money. So that's one. That's on the way down, on the way up. CNNA. I had flipped that back a couple weeks ago, uh, 2.8 to 3.5, whatever, made a nice amount of money. It stayed there for a little bit, of, a bit of time. It ended up breaking out. I didn't think it was going to get this far. Market cap is super low. So that gives it a lot of room to run. Great. I'll, I'll go over that in a minute. But they came out with this grace period bull crap on OTC markets. Now that's probably something coordinated at OTC markets, given the volume for somebody to load. Okay. What I was surprised at and where I was wrong was I thought that it was going to have a few days before they came out with any new information and the stock was going to continue to drop, which it would have. I came all the way back down to 6.4. My entry price was going to be between 3.8 and 4. Would have loved it, right? So that was in my mind. What I, That was my call. Was And I said it on the boards. I wasn't like bashing like crazy. People are always like bent out of shape. Whatever. I get it. I, I do the same thing. I, I, if someone's bearish and I'm bullish, I'm like, I hate you with all my guts. So I get it. Fine. But 
today, they started bombarding the market with news. And the first one, I didn't. I was just like, oh my God, wow, they did come out with a tweet that's pretty positive. I don't know if that's going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to buy it in the morning. I don't know where it's going to go from here. I want to trust my gut. I'm still going to go with what I thought. Then they come out with an AK that's talking about canceling shares. So it's like they just start dropping bombs, right? The price is moving and it's moving quick. I have $7,000 in cash strictly for something like this. This is why you always want to keep cash on the side. See it break a cent. I'm like still waiting. I'm like, all right, here comes the flippers in to take it down to nine. Saw $400,000 share ask. Didn't hit it like a dumb, dumb, but I, whatever. I'm just waiting to the end of the day. I want to see where it's closing, where it's going to be in the last 15 minutes. So I see it at 106. I take it for 200K. I see it, uh, you know, a little bit higher. I take it for another 400K. The point is, I think it, I'm already up 600 hours in it because of the push at the end of the day. So I made the right decision as we stand. What my goal in this is to get a gap in the morning of 20% gap right off the bat on $7,000 already up 600. That's $2,000 in the bank in an overnight trade. Then you make the decision. I'm going off on tangents. The point is, is it didn't hit my four buy-in. It didn't go to where I thought it was going to go. But I didn't sit there and be like, well, I already said that I wasn't going to do it. So, and was it prideful and said, well, I'm not going to buy it now. I'm not even going to look at it. Screw it. That's an emotional trader. That's a ridiculous way to be, but people will do that. I'm telling you, I'm sure most people, there's been people that have been there. You bought something, you sold, and then you were just like, ah, like ah, it's running. I'm not even going to look at it. Well, if it's bullish like this, you can always hop back on the train. You just need to swallow your pride and realize that the opportunity can still be there, especially with the pump that this bad boy's got going and the company coming out and bombarding the market with news. Incredible. I give kudos to the company. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, now... It closed at the high of the day. That's going to lead us into our charts. I pretty much already talked about it. But either way, just on a closing note, swallow your pride and you'll be much happier. All right, guys. So let's jump into the charts. Already been over CNNA a good amount. So we're not going to talk too much about it. Uh, but very, very, very bullish. Tomorrow could definitely see an easy gap to 15, somewhere in that range, 15, 16, uh, just based on the end of the day volume. I mean, anybody that sold is pretty much sold. Um, you know, usually when the, when the, uh, the, flippers come in at the end of the day, they take it down in the past, in the last like 20 minutes, you'll see that dip. And hopefully at the end of the day, you can push back to where the high of the day was. This thing just blasted through the high of the day and just kept making high of days. Uh, so that's why I went heavy and full bore into this because I do see a strong gap. In fact, I could see a continuation uh, just based on the fact that the company is being very vocal. Um, I do like a lot of the investors that are in this. Power Battles being one of them. Um, you've probably seen him. He is somebody that I've actually met in person. I stayed the night at his place in Houston. Uh, his, him and his wife were really nice. They were super uh, hospitable to me. So, you know, if he's in something and bullish, I know the guy. He knows what he's talking about. He's been doing this for a long time um so looks good we'll we'll play it by ear uh you guys know what i do i'm not saying 25 cents could it go there absolutely um i you know i do see some resistance uh, you know coming in uh, like two cents it just depends on the volume tomorrow morning if the volume comes in heavy that's all it needs is volume and this will continue to go um I don't know. And it's a very thin share structure and they're knocking down shares. So again, I don't want to spend too much time on this bad boy, but my pride has been swallowed. So I mean, they, they continue to surprise. Moan, uh, really bad chart here. Sorry about this. Uh, you can't really see anything on it. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's going to be enough of that. Uh, that's enough of that. Um, so Moan, Again, not a great look at the chart. Oversold on pretty much every technical reading. But remember, this stock is a dilution machine. Now, I know a lot of people, at this point, people know that. Like, even if you're bullish, you know that they're dumping. Like, you have to. If you don't, then you're just being willfully dumb. 
but it did have a nice little pop back today. I mean, only two, at least it's green. I mean, anything green in this bad boy is going to get the uh, bulls uh, uh, storming. So I'm happy for you guys. I hope that it settles here. I don't have any interest in the stock unless it's a lot cheaper just because uh, I mean, it just has, it's showing no signs of breaking this downtrend. If it breaks the downtrend and they stop diluting, I'll buy uh, anything over a dollar and over two dollars. It doesn't matter. I just need to have com confirmation that this thing isn't going to just continue to drop. Um, because this reminds me a lot of Jagex, poop stock, poop 101, dumps on your brain. Um, and I don't like having uh, dumps on my brain. Uh, it's really not something that I look forward to or enjoy or think about um, or any of that. It, it, it's So that's why I don't want to affiliate myself with this because I've already hit and missed and, I, and I'm not going to just keep trying to, sometimes you let a stock be, buy it if it's going bullish, buy it if it's super oversold. It's just kind of in the middle for me. Uh, we'll see where that one goes from here. Uh, I, I I wish you guys the best. Lawrence Harge is a, probably the, the I, I mean, it's funny. It, it's borderline uh, it, lunacy. Uh, in fact, no, it's not borderline. It's, it's cross the border. Um, but I've already been over this. I don't know why I keep even talking about it. I, I, I hope you guys win. I hope that the price goes up. I don't think that Mullen has anything, I, I mean, to do with Lawrence Harge. I think that's just some random situation that they need to get, get on unless they're complete scammers because this guy needs to be in jail for manipulating the price of a stock, obviously. Um, is the company behind this? Could be. That uh, very well could be, uh, but they're probably have all their cover tracks covered. So who knows? NVDA. Uh, just extremely bullish still. I, I don't know how, I mean, it's running with the market, um, AI stock. That's just like, I don't know. It's just a beast. Um, and your RSI is not even cooked somehow. Like, I don't even understand. Like, I mean, I would be selling here. This is just like ridiculous. If I was in, the, the PE is like 176. It's overbought. It's at a trillion market cap. Like, I just don't think this is sustainable, but it is the market and it's fairy dust and nobody ever knows. So, you know, I have a lot of friends that are saying 600. It very well could hit that. I would just at least scale gains here, take something off the table um, because it is overbought. But I do like, I mean, it's the best long stock in the past 10 years by far without question. UCAR could keep going tomorrow. I would usually never say that on a stock that's up 144%, down a little bit after market. Uh, but this thing is a beast. I mean, it just, that's a huge candle on huge volume. Uh, it's at a very low price. It IPO'd up at $60 or somewhere in that range, $44. And now it's only at seven. You never know what's going to happen. I don't know what the news is here. Please let me know why this ran. Was it just a fluke or was there a reason? This thing could do one of these three big days. I don't know. Uh, again, let me know the news and I'll decide from there. Lucid. Uh, another car company, another one of these EVs that I'm telling you guys, this like I mean, this looks like a pump and dump, but I, I work for Lucid. I've done a lot of jobs for jobs for Lucid. We do a lot of their uh, installations for their where they bring in the car. And they set it up and you can go and you can look at the display. It's like basically it's it's an activation. It's a display uh, with the actual car. And beautiful cars. I've been inside them. I've driven inside. They're like nice and they're legit. Expensive, but they're very, very good cars. That would, I would say, would be the closest honest competition to Tesla. And when you're talking about a company that isn't already established like your, uh, you know, Mercedes or whatever. But like I always say with these car companies like Moan and like Lucid is they need to dilute for money. Now, they just did a private placement for, I don't know, a billion dollars or something um, or multi-billion dollars at a cost that's lower than the current trading price. So obviously that's going to cause a stir and it's going to cause the price to drop probably down to around that price. But remember, a private investment that's giving them billions and billions of dollars, that's not like a weird thing to do. Um, so I would almost see this as a buying opportunity. I do think this, is, this if you bought this now or relatively soon, um, especially if you can get in cheaper, if you hold this for the next 20 years, you might be in really, really good shape. Um, so again, this isn't one to look at. I mean, I wouldn't buy 
rely on these spikes, but on these low level days, uh, maybe start to accumulate, have a long position. This would be one because again, I work for them and I could tell you that they have the best shot at taking over uh, as uh, being a main brand. Lulu. Uh, I also do a lot of jobs for Lululemon. Um, and it's unbelievable the amount... Wow. Now, this is a different stock then. Let's see. L just to go over Lululemon, it's surprising because... You know, if you're in this stock and you're long on it, this is another thing that you can be long on. I think they're just trying to fill this gap, which is insane because this has just been getting tanked on day in, day out. It's very surprising, but I guess they want to fill that gap either way. And you're oversold on every technical. Uh, but Lululemon is probably one of the best. I don't know how their financials are and stuff, uh, but when you want to talk about popularity, um, when we do jobs for them, they have these things where you can take in your old uh, yoga pants and they, they'll fix them. I kid you not, I've never seen a line that long for anything in my life. I'm talking about from the inside of the, uh, the event location to outside, around the block, down the street, four hour wait just to get for a $60 savings on a pair of yoga pants. Like that's how much people sweat. Lululemon. So it's it's not like a bad company, again, to own long term, just get in on the down uh, sides. And I don't know, hopefully they, you know, they their competition isn't, I don't know too much about the company other than the fact that people love them. It's like um, Aloe might be their competition, but still very, very good company to own long term. Random because I wasn't even talking about that one. There was another one. Well, I thought Lululemon was up 12% today, but I don't, maybe after hours, maybe it's after hours. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, that's Lululemon for you. GDVM. Uh, yeah, I mean, somebody asked me to go over this. I don't want to spend too much time on it. It was Vmost, used to be in JPEX. Uh, now it's in GDVM. He's asking me if he should just give up. I mean, chances are, man, that this thing like just pulls back to from where it came. I, I can't tell you whether the deal is going to come through or not. Ch if you want to go on history, chances are that a lot of times it doesn't happen. Um, that's why I base my trading on even CNNA. Like, that's a wild run. I don't base that on happening every day. That's going to happen once in a blue moon. You're going to hear about it, whatever. This thing had that type of run. I mean, this is one of the most spectacular moves I've ever seen in my entire career. But, you know, you didn't get in in any one of these situations where you're able to sell for a gain. Well, now look, you're downtrend seriously and you're going back on these. Uh, th th this is a triple bottom. It could bounce from here. But if you break below that, you're looking at two and a half. You break below that, you're kind of like free falling. Uh, you know, if this deal doesn't come through, uh, then I would say you're still overbought. So, you know, you just really listen. I don't know any of the DD. Uh, I'm just saying, chances are, I just don't get held in bags. Don't get caught up in this stuff. Don't buy it and be down and thinking, ah, what do I do? Down 40%. Just cut it. If you get in, don't believe in any of the hype. If you get it, don't believe what they're saying on the boards. Don't believe the pumpers. Don't believe the website that's telling you that they have connections with every major Fortune 500 company underneath this moon. Okay, because it's all a lie. Got it? Most of it. Most of it. You'll learn that. Trust me, I used to always get bamboozled. I used to look at the things and be like, oh my God, this is the next good thing. I know it is. I know it is. Yo, 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 yo. And I used to get crazy about it. And I used to hold up 400% and then lose money. Okay, it's just, uh, chances are, if you don't sell, you're not going to sell the top. If you don't sell the in-between, then you're going to be asking yourself, what am I going to do here down 40%? Son, what's up, son? Um, this one is, uh, you know, it, it's curling back down here. I, a lot of people were like, and then I went to the boards and I saw, okay, this is resistance. It tried to get up here and that's where it broke down. Now it's getting back to that level and it's getting rejected. Again, I'm buying 30 cents. 
I'm buying 30 cents if I can. If I can't, then oh well. But I'm setting my alert at 31 cents. Remember to do these things. Jesus, I, this is one thing that I haven't been doing. Uh, the past week, I've been losing money because I've been drinking too much. I've been focused on not smoking and stuff, but I've been drinking too much and not putting in the work. I haven't been doing the what I need to do, okay? So we look at San. We say, okay, 31 is the uh, is where I'm going to set my alert. If that hits, I know to get in at 30. That's going to be on the middle orange band. That's going to be a significant pullback, and it's going to be a good price. I'm not just going to guess up here and follow car jockey's advice. See, that's how people lose money, okay? 31 cents. VDRM. Uh, this thing is like settling down here. I, I was watching it. Uh, it did start to hit this. I mean, just see what it's doing. It's flatlining. Uh, not a lot of volume. Obviously going to need news. Give me, Let me know whoever's in this and watching this. Please leave me a comment and tell me what's on the horizon. What's in the pipeline? Is there anything that's expected to come out? Because the last time I saw this and was looking into the stock, I saw that there was like nothing on the horizon, which I don't like because I don't know how long this is going to trade sideways. But keep an eye on it because once it's, you, you know, once it starts to get, look here, this is what we do. Okay. I don't really have a care for anything below this, but if it does break, If it starts, if I'm going to set my alert at 12.5, okay? 12.5, if it starts to get there, it's going to be, okay, what's going on? Let's see. Is there volume coming in? All right, time to buy, okay? That's, that's how it's done. But either way, let me know. VPLM. Uh... I mean, I, I just, there, <laughs> this is, I don't know what's going to happen. Again, I keep saying I'm going to buy four if I can, like four, one, somewhere in that range. Um, I set my alert for zero, four, five. And point 11. Okay. So that way I don't have to stare at the stock every day. If it's breaking past 11, this thing got really good news and it's ready to go. If it fills this gap at four, you're going to be looking for a bounce. So I, the one thing I don't like about the stock um, is the fact that the, uh, the insiders of the company have shares from 0 0.005. I mean, that's just egregious and it's not something that you can look past. Okay, so like if you're a bull, I get it. But like seriously, think about that because that's what ruins a lot of these stocks is they always have a good story to tell, but the owners usually have shares to dump. They don't care because they're already up millions and millions of bucks. So yeah, this settlement could be huge. It could run to 50 cents, uh, no problem. But I'm just waiting to find out. There's a couple weeks left. So let's see what happens from here. It's going to be very interesting couple of weeks here. AIAD. Still in this, could have sold today, but I still like the chart um, because it's going to, hopefully it just stays on this trend line. It's, it kind of flags a little bit and then breaks out again. Uh, I just like it. It's AI. It's not overcooked on too much. Volume was a little bit weaker today. You had some flippers, but you got those flippers out. Big bids right underneath a cent, which kind of, I mean, I like that. Um, I'm seeing a max low here of potentially nine. I don't think it's going to come back. I think it's going to consolidate in this range. I'm in at nine, six average. So I like that um, until it breaks down below the, this, uh, you know, and that might even be a small time frame. I might just hold this bad boy because it is showing signs of breaking out. Sometimes you're going to have a red day in that situation. It can't just run straight up. I do like the fact that it's consolidating here. Let's see what happens tomorrow. A bullish uh, candle that closes is above like let's say a 0 0.011 would be very good going into next week uh you know and and the weekly candles probably got to be looking great on this let's see not one month that looks it though yeah i mean the the weekly candle looks brilliant if we can get a close Tomorrow up, uh, like I said, above 11, you get a strong weekly candle on this. I might just hold this for a little bit. That's why sometimes you want to look at the time frames. okay? You got a W formation here. Now, you don't want this to, to extend too much, but I could definitely see this thing, you know. I like this one a little bit longer, like a couple month hold, to be honest.
Like if you just held this for a couple months, you're probably in really good shape. Uh, okay, let's see. God, I'm like fat. I'm not fat, but like I need to lose weight. Because I'm, I, I, if you don't smoke cigarettes, you gain like five, 10 pounds. Uh, CVNA. That's on the weekly. Oh my God, the weekly looks so good. Jesus. It's weird here. Sorry. But CVNA looks really good. I'm just going to come out and say it. This thing might have a lot of room to run. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you're not really overbought on anything. This is just a bad look at the chart. But either way, take my word for it or don't. Carvana looks really, really good. So, um, yeah. Another really bad looking chart it's pissing me off. Whenever I change, I don't know how to go back. I'm not a technical genius. Yes, I was born in a computer lab, uh, but then they erased my memory because I was, uh, I knew too much and um, that's what they do. So this one had an amazing day today on pretty strong. And I saw it yesterday in the low teens and I said, I just don't know if it's going to get the volume. And it did get the volume today. I don't know if anything came out. But it pushed to 50%. I would have definitely taken my gain. And it came back down all the way down to 17. This thing looks like it's heating up. It might not be done yet at all. Uh, very, very thin stock. So you get any type of volume, any type of good news, um, it could keep going. And it's, it's also at a very low market cap all the way down here. So AAPJ looks good still. Craig. Uh... One, this looks good too because it does. It seems like this is resistance, but it's starting to hang a little bit higher. Before it came back down and really just kind of fell off a cliff, now it's starting to consolidate at a, at a higher range, which is very good to see. Uh, your RSI and MACD look pretty good. Nothing really wrong there. Um, volume. Not a lot of volume, about $20,000 worth of shares. But that says that this is probably a very thin stock and can probably run really hard at any time, which, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm looking for 172 would be the entry for me, but I don't know if I'm going to get that. I think that this thing is going to continue. Gegger. This thing's looking really good as well. A um, little bit choppy, as you can see from the formations back here. It always kind of looks really good, kind of like right here, but then it like doesn't really do much. I'm going to want to see a break of two and a half, and then you might have a shot at three and a half, somewhere in that range. Nice little scout play. None of your technicals are overbought. Um, what's the volume looking like? Not a lot of volume. Again, a lot of these things look choppy like this because there's not a lot of volume involved. That That's a big turnoff to me. I can't really do anything with 200000 That's only $4,000 traded on the entire day. Um, it, it's Those are companies that I don't really like to trade, to be honest. TRKA. Um, nice little recovery here. Big bang, uh, big fall off. Um, you know, I think this went through a reverse split. It had to have because it was just at 15 cents. So they split, um, and it actually ran on the split, which is good. Uh, that's great to see. I know that a lot of people have been beaten down in this. Um, I, 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 sometimes reverse splits can be good things. If this is a real company and they do have a lot of things going for it and they needed to reduce the shares in the share structure, that's fine. As long as they don't dilute it back, uh, you know, to a, a balloon share structure. And then you all of a sudden you find yourself, um, reverse spinning again. That's what can happen with these companies. So hopefully that's behind them and hopefully they're in for the long haul now. And they're not just trying to expand whatever they're trying to do. Good luck. Uh, I, I really wish you guys the best. But good day today. Uh, enjoy it. E-Tech. This is one to keep an eye on. Definitely putting an alert in for this on trip eight. Uh, 
Um, if that breaks, that's a very heavy resistance. I mean, if nine breaks, it's, I mean, you just, yeah. If you're sitting at one, one, I'm, I'm like going heavy on this. If it's at the end of the day and it's breaking out, every technical looks pretty soft, a little bit of an increase in volume today, waiting on merger details. If you're breaking one, you're probably the merger was closed or something really good came out. And then you're looking, if you can get through one, 12, whatever, you're looking at potentially getting to 17. So you're looking at a very strong double opportunity. If that nine breaks, buy it. Money. Looking at this one for tomorrow for sure. Um, it's It's been consolidating at two and it's finally starting to go again. As you can see, came up to this resistance. Didn't buy it right away. Actually came back down to 18, 17. Would have been really good buys. Now it's pushing 232 and it's ready to go. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking into buying this very, very shortly um, because of the, the consolidation and the fact, yeah, this is going to go on a, probably a very, have a very strong day tomorrow. I'm looking at this in the morning. Um, I'm going to write that here. Close watch for the morning. All right. DBMM. This is what I'm going to start doing on this page. Like, Setting alerts. I'm just going to write next thing and just follow along, honestly, because like the alerts that I'm setting are educated, uh, whether it be this band or whether it be on a, a resistance break or on a support. It, it, if you're a new trader, this is like, this is the only thing you should be following is setting the, these alerts and buying on these alerts. Because I'm telling you, when I do this and I take my time, I have enough knowledge to know where if it if it hits that it's going to be a good buy. Like AIAD the other day, I set the alert for nine three. In fact, I really wanted that stock, so I put my shares at nine three. Hit in the morning, never went below it, and closed at like eleven something, up twenty percent. So that, you can pinpoint this stuff if you set alerts, because then you don't. It's stress free. Oh, there's an alert on this. Oh, I'll buy it. I have cash. Oh, I'll buy it. I'm telling you. So just follow along. Money looks really good for tomorrow. Love it. DBMM. God, I'm hungry. Like in this, you break above, uh, you're, we're watching for 16, uh, 11 break. We'll break 11 with strength. Maybe you see some consolidation there. If it hits 11, again, go to the chart, look at it, say, okay, where's the volume? Is it seeing like it's stabilizing here? Is it breaking wildly above it? Um, you know, Make your call, but that is your resistance. Your resistance is right around 11. So let's see if it can return to that, which I think it will. It's came down. Now it's starting to reverse. It's break. It's engulfing these candles that it dumped on. So uh, this is a very thin stock. RSI is not overcooked. MACD looks pretty good. Volume is pretty steady. Not terrible. Not great either, but it's a very thin stock. You get it at 20 million, 30 million uh, share a day. You're looking at a significant gain. GVSI, waking up, waking up. Do they have the itchiest nose of all time? Not sure. Uh, but yeah, GVSI is waking up. It's unbelievable. Um, that's very good. I've been saying to consult uh, buy down here. Now, I didn't know when this was going to happen, but it's happening now. Um, look, I mean, you got the volume coming in a little bit steadier. Your Matt, your uh, RSI looks really, really good. MACD looks really good. Um chart has been beaten down. This thing has a lot of room to run. It's been beaten down like crazy. I'm looking at uh, 255. And I'm setting alert at 12. Just, just to keep my eye on it. See what's going on. If it hits 12... At least I, I got my eye on it. And that's not that high from here. But again, maybe I'll do 12.5, okay? But GVSI waking up. Got to do my DD on that bad boy tonight. Zura. Because there's a lot of people that love that stock. Very popular. Zura breaking out a little bit here. Um, keep an eye on this one. Now, is it 
flagging with these two peaks. I'm not sure if it breaks, it, it, you know, if you get up to nine bucks, you're going to be 50% up from here. Uh, but you might want to wait on confirmation. I don't know. I mean, the volume was pretty low, uh, but not really. I mean, it's still liquid enough. Your RSI looks good. MACD looks good. Looks like it's curling up on the chart. This thing can run. Uh, we'll have to see where, and the Bollinger Bands are pinching. Zura doesn't look bad at all. Uh, I'm not interested in buying it, so to speak, but if you're in it, that's my take. Minimum also looks good. Reclaiming this middle orange band. Technicals look pretty uh, cooled off and ready to go again. Good flag here. Uh, this obviously is following this line. Uh, so if you break above six bucks, you might be in really good shape here. Setting my alert for six dollars and I'll pay attention to it when that breaks. LVGI. Now this is another really insane one. I did the math on it. I think the... Uh, it's not the best look at the chart, but I did the math and I think that it's at a hundred thousand dollar market cap, which is insane. I mean, literally like a hundred thousand. It's a trip three and has 400 mil. I've never seen this ever in my life. I mean, if they came out and were just like, we exist, I mean, dude, I'm going to be, if I can get twos in this, the market cap will be like 60,000 bucks. I mean, you, that's like you could be a hostile takeover for half a hundred that. Set it for two. Set me alert for two. If I'm getting some bibwax there, I'm buying that. I don't give a crap. That's insanity. That's insanatorium. I would say three is a good price for a double. We shall see. GSAC. Uh, this one's looking good here, actually. It, it popped. It went on that pump. Now it's flagging right at this middle band. If you can get sixes, they're going to be money, in my opinion. This company just has to come out with something else. Again, got to do DD. Put DD. next. Keep notes when you watch these videos. Then go and do DD on it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I am going to tell you where I'm, what I'm looking at is good entries and exits. And I'm going to tell you what I need to look into. But I mean, if, if you already know about it, great. But if you're doing this and you say, oh, I don't know much about minimum, but I like that one. Let's do some DD on that tonight. That's all it takes. But you got to do the work. You got to do the work. Don't just go on stock in the morning and be like, what's trending? No, you'll lose every time. Um... And I, I was getting close to 25,000, got lazy, got cash positive, didn't do my alerts, didn't do my shit. Now I'm back down to 15, 16,000. So, you know, but that's okay. I know what I did wrong. You get back on your horse and you just maintain that mindset of discipline. And, you know, you get back to where you were and you say, okay, I'm not going to make that same mistake. It's always, we're always growing. You're going to, there's going to be multiple failures, failures before you succeed. Trust me. co -op. Uh, co uh, this is also at a good spot here. Got a lot of interest on it. Uh, yeah, I mean, very thin stock. If you were going to buy it a couple of days ago at two something, it's definitely not a bad idea to buy it down at 150. Um, if you can get it there, this could be one of those things that go like this. You know what I mean? Like I, I do like this one super thin and a lot of interest. Those are very, those are things that pique my interest. Uh, DVLP tried this one yesterday. Didn't work. Got in at two seven out at like two six. Um, that's fine because I, I just realized that it's not going to get my pop that I wanted. Uh, the company is, I mean, obviously, it's a scam, just like every other OTC. Uh, so get that through your head. All the people that told me not to sell six. Okay. Um, just like if this could break out into a CNNA, but this is what happens almost every time. So let's not get used to the ones that run like this. Let's get used to the ones that do this. And then we say, okay, we revisit and we say, all right, uh, we got 2-2 two -two down here. I love that for a buy-in. If I can get anything right above two, that's historically a bottom. 
Um, and I'll love that with all of my heart. With a middle band at 3.7, uh, I could at least, I know that I'm probably going to be at least be able to get out at 2.8. So you give me anything like, what's the max low here for the most part? It's, yeah, it's like two. It's like two. If I can get in at two, I'm in the money. I, it's going to be very hard for me to lose money. CLNV. Uh, it looks a lot like GDMV. I don't know why they ten are tending to run on the same situation here. Um, but reclaim this middle band, break out of this downtrend. You could be in good shape. Is the company starting to come? I mean, uh, not a lot of volume. Um, interest is, was peaked back here. I don't know how many people are still interested in this. I don't know the tail of the tape. Let me know what's going on with the company. Um, but you just got to break this downtrend. You got to reclaim this middle band, which you have, but you got to stay above it and show some bullishness with volume that will come in. AABB. Um, guys, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, this thing does this many a time. Now it is coming back into a buy zone. This might be a good place to buy. I, I'm not in love with the MACD still turning down. Give it a few days to consolidate. If you're thinking about buying this, um, don't get sucked into these pumps. If you're buying down here at two and you have a chance to sell at five, uh, congratulations. You even held too long. You should have sold for a hundred percent, but you got, you got lucky. You, you got to know when the, the, it's just the gig is up. Okay. And, uh, now it's back down here and maybe you start thinking about rebuying. Um, maybe it's not at its bottom, but you could start to scale in. Uh, so th that's the, how the game is played. I'm looking at potential 274 is where I would be buying. Um, so I'm actually going to set an alert there. 27. AMC. And remember, you do this every night. There's going to be ones that don't hit the next day, obviously. So you're just going to be getting alert after alert after alert. If you get 20 alerts a day on your phone because of all the time that you spent in watching these videos and doing this, you will have 20 alerts a day. And then you can, out of those 20, you can narrow it down to even better ideas. Like you see this, oh, that one's a guarantee. Oh, that one I'm not so sure about, but I'll watch it for me. You know, so I'm telling you, this is how it's done. This is how traders win. Most people don't do this though because they're at work and they're just like, I put it in this and let's see where it's at at the end of the day. No, that, I mean, if you can do that, but yeah, okay. So AMC turning bullish here. Market is pumping a little bit. Hope I'm looking at a max gain of short term of five, short term of about 510. Uh, that's still a good gain, especially for high liquidity traders. I'm bullish on this now. It does look like it's turning. It, it's engulfed this previous day's candle. It's had a few red days in a row, quite a few. So it might be looking for a rebound here back up to 510. SMX, what did this bad boy do? See, this is, again, this is why you sell. I, I bought it 118 uh, on a pump. I thought that it had more in the tank. I thought it was going to go to somewhere. I swallowed my pride. I said, nah, this just doesn't have it. Sold 110 from 118. Um, not a bad loss, but I'd still be sitting in a bag and it'd be at 99 cents. So keep an eye on this one. It's obviously riding a bottom here. The CEO likes to come out with a lot of news. It does run on the news, um, but then it's, it's settling. It's not getting the runs that it used to. So... Um, you know, obviously this was a big run, a smaller run, a really small run, and now it's just kind of settling. Uh, we'll have to see where it goes from here, but that is all I have to say today. I talked too long. I can't believe I'm so hungry. My, uh, what would it be? Health tip of the day. What my diet is going to be. Did I eat anything this morning? No, I haven't eaten. No, I did. I had about a half pound of ground beef. That's it. 85, 15, half pound of ground beef. That's it. Right now, I'm going to have a little bit of carbs. I'm going to have rice and I'm going to have ground beef. That's it. Then I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to burn off those uh, uh, that rice and those carbs. And then what I'm going to have for dinner, protein shake with water and some type of vegetable and fruit, whether it be carrots uh, and maybe even I'll dip them in ranch. If I'm eating this well, you can splurge with a little bit of ranch dip, okay? You don't have to go crazy. And then I'll have some seasonal fruits, okay? And that's, I get a good amount of carbs. You got to eat carbs, well-balanced, good proteins, uh, rices, only drinking water, no smoking cigs, okay? We're get, this is going to be the healthiest summer of my life. Um, and it's 
starts on this page and I want it to be for you. Somebody said that their goal is to lose 30 pounds. Eat like I just said. It's good. I woke up and had the most beautiful beef. Uh, think about it. We're so lucky that we're even able to have uh, ground beef delivered to our door. and We don't have to slaughter the cattle and churn the, the chuck. Okay. So uh, all we have to do is throw it in a pan. Okay. So it, cook. Take your time. You don't have to do all that extracurricular. We live in the softest society. Put the meat on the pan, cook it, and enjoy the flavors of the fats, okay? Because trust me, it's a beautiful flavor. I'm, I can't wait to have my lunch. And you want to lose 30 pounds, you eat like that, and you stay active. You got to be active as hell. You got to do cardio. I got to go before I talk myself into oblivion. Um, day six, baby. Let's get day seven.